What do we say to that person who has a dream that has been delayed? How do we respond when someone has a de desire, that dream they're trusting God for, but they don't see evidence of it happening? They don't see any movement. And I'm not talking this simple, oh, just trust God, but I had this conversation with a person this week. We're talking the kind of dream that is so important, so pivotal, so foundational that it would literally transform every aspect of someone's life. It's a good thing. It is powerful, and it would be truly transformational. The kind of things where they get that glimpse from time to time where it seems like God is saying, yes, I'm going to do it. But then there's also those times when you're just waiting. The times when it feels like if you don't cling tightly to that dream, then it will slip away. How would God want us to respond? Well, first off, you'll always hear me say foundation or faithfulness is the most powerful principle there is. It's underappreciated, but it is the most powerful principle. God will always, always, always honor faithfulness. Now, you may say, well, how does faithfulness help me fulfill this dream? Well, you're faithful with what God puts in your life, whatever that is, everything He puts in your life. And more importantly, be faithful with not just yours, but be faithful with what is others. See, God says is we're faithful with what belongs to someone else. He'll give us our own. It's a powerful principle. But there's something else. See, Jeremiah 29 is a powerful chapter. Now, you may know God makes this amazing promise. His people are in captivity. And he says, he gives them this reassurance that he is going to take them out and take them to the promised land. He's going to give them the amazing. But they're waiting. Now, what, how are they to respond? And this is where we have to understand that God's ways are not our ways. See, how would I respond? You have this reassurance. You have this promise. There's this great thing. I would live with my bags packed by the front door. That would be my faith statement. That would be my faith application, showing God, okay, Lord, I'm trusting, I'm believing your promise. In fact, I'm believing it so much, I'm ready to go when you give the word. But see, God says, but hold on, what are you missing out on by doing that? And what does he actually specifically tell them to do? Well, earlier in that chapter, he actually tells them, build houses, plant vineyards, have children. In other words, build a life, establish yourself, put down roots. But now, hang on, put it in perspective. When God says, okay, it's time to go, it's time to get that thing I promised, they're leaving those houses and those vineyards behind. Why would God say, do these things that don't seem to lead us to the fulfillment of the promise? See, God's desire is that we would build a life, that we would not hold back, that we would establish ourselves. And in an interesting way, isn't that a greater demonstration of faith? Isn't that a greater demonstration of us trusting God that He will fulfill His Word? Is it a greater demonstration when we establish our life? Or take that mentality that, oh, this is just giving up. See, hope is a desire, but faith is a complete trust, a complete confidence that God is going to do what He says He will do. And His principle is, while we're waiting for that transformational thing, that dream, that desire to be fulfilled, God would say, go establish yourself, go build your life. Even though when the moment comes, there may be things that you leave behind. Building a life is demonstration of trusting God while you're waiting for the fulfillment of the dream.